Recently, a murder in England has been making headlines all around the world and sparked a huge debate about the harassment and abuse of women in the streets. This case is still new at the time of writing and it takes place in London on March the 3rd, 2021. On this day, a woman named Sarah Everard was visiting a friend in Clapham in South London. The two of them drank wine and hung out for a while. And then, at around 9pm, she began walking home to Brixton, which is around 50 minutes away on foot. Sarah was a 33-year-old woman who was born in York, but moved and lived in London and worked there as a marketing assistant. She had just been offered a promotion at work and was looking forward to progressing in her career. But Sarah never made it home that night. After two days had passed, she had failed to make any contact with her friends and family. So concerns began to grow and she was reported missing. Her family were of course extremely worried and they said that her disappearance was out of character. On the 6th of March, the Metropolitan Police issued an appeal over Sarah's disappearance. They released some CCTV footage of her walking through a Sainsbury's where she had bought the wine that she would later drink that night with her friend. She can be seen wearing a green jacket, blue trousers with a white diamond pattern, and turquoise and orange trainers with a white hat. The police began to try and piece together where she could have gone to or where she was taken to. Specialist police officers from across the UK came together to help try and crack the case as swiftly as possible. The police received 120 calls from people coming forward with information. Some doorbell cam footage was also handed over to them too. So what we know is that at 9.15 that night, she made a call to her boyfriend and the couple chatted for around 15 minutes as she was making her way back home. Then, a doorbell camera shows her walking through a place called Poinders Road at around 9.30pm. And it's around this time where the phone call with her boyfriend ended. The doorbell footage is the last piece of video evidence showing Sarah walking home that night. After that, the police were unaware if she even made it home that night. Sniffer dogs were brought in to search the gardens and streets where Sarah would have walked home in the hopes to find some clues. The police also searched a pond in Clapham Common and the drains along the A205. Then, in a shocking twist, at around midnight on the 9th of March, the police announced that they had arrested a man in connection with the disappearance of Sarah. But the occupation of this man made the disappearance all the more chilling. They had arrested a serving armed Metropolitan Police officer. He was off duty at the time Sarah would have gone missing, but they didn't give any further details at this point, apart from that a woman had also been arrested, suspected to have helped the man in question. The day later, on the 10th, the police revealed the identity of this individual. His name is Wayne Cousin, a 48-year-old man and was an armed uniformed patrol officer who was part of the diplomatic protection unit. These are the kind of officers that guard places like Downing Street and the Westminster. The police then swiftly went into action, searching a woodland near Ashford. Sarah's family were waiting for positive news from the police. And that unfortunately never came. By the evening of the 10th of March, the Metropolitan Police Commissioner announced the devastating news that human remains had been found in the area that the police were searching in the woodlands in Ashford. Although the body was hard to identify, a formal identification procedure began, which took the police two days to conclude. The police then announced that the remains were indeed that of Sarah's. The fact that Sarah's body was difficult to identify makes me wonder what this sick individual must have done to her. Then, the Metropolitan Police confirmed the news that Wayne had also been accused of exposing himself on two separate occasions at a South London restaurant 
only three days before Sarah went missing. At this moment in time, Wayne Cousins has been charged with their kidnap and murder of Sarah. It's been said that a substantial amount of evidence has been collected, which seems to indicate that this indeed is the man who killed Sarah that night. The woman arrested in connection with the disappearance has been released on bail and is set to return to the police station on a date in April. The Metropolitan Police have also announced that since Wayne has been in custody, he has been taken to hospital twice in 48 hours and both times for treatment regarding head injuries. He has been discharged and he has returned to police custody. Although information about how he attained these injuries is still being investigated, one of Sarah's friends had made a statement about her, saying, she has always been an exceptional friend dropping everything to be there to support her friends whenever they need her. It was only recently that she was telling me the good news about her new role as a senior marketing account manager, which she was excited to start. The only way that they could identify Sarah's body was through her dental records. I will be doing a part two to this video when the new information is released and when we know exactly what happened to this poor woman. When thinking about this case, it made me wonder about how many times we have walked past someone in the street who has thought about harming us or even killing us for their own self-gratification. Perhaps they contemplated it, acted it out in their own heads, but then changed their minds or backed out. It's quite a scary thought. One thing that stuck out to me about this case, when it made the rounds on social media, is that people began to blame her, saying that it was her own fault for walking through London so late at night, which is known to be an unsafe place, or at least in parts. But Sarah actually did all the correct protocols that women are told to do to stay safe when walking the streets alone at night. She stuck to busy routes, she called her boyfriend, and she wore bright clothes. But what I found most chilling is that she was allegedly killed by a person who was an armed police officer, a public servant who is supposed to protect the citizens of the UK from danger. I understand that we live in dangerous times, but I don't think it's right that women don't feel safe when walking the streets alone. And unfortunately, I don't see things changing anytime soon. My goal with this YouTube channel was to report on murders and never to get political in any way, shape or form. But I do have to say, I find myself frustrated at the UK laws surrounding personal protection. If you're unaware, it's illegal to carry pepper spray in the UK and I can't see why this is the case. In my opinion, pepper spray would be a great way to deter these kinds of sick individuals from even attempting to do the things they do. But, if a woman is caught with pepper spray, they can get the same punishment as if it was a gun. I think these people that lurk the streets know full well that they can take advantage of this. Trying to rationalize these people with education doesn't seem like an option that would really work too well, since there will always be people willing to do these horrendous things. I also think it would help women feel safer when walking the streets with an equalizer, as clearly these other measures like walking in busy well-lit areas and wearing bright clothes aren't always enough, but that's just my two cents on the matter. I will do my best to share the updates on this case as they progress. Thank you for watching. If your friends or family watch this kind of content, then please share it with them as it helps the channel to grow. Also, don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in the next video.